Good afternoon, dear friends. We are very glad to see you here. We will discuss the audit of the translation company and we'll tell you about our experience. And our experience is counting from 2016, three years of, of history. So who we are? I'm Kirill Fedotov. I'm representing translation company in text, one of the leaders of translation industry in Ukraine. I work in the company from 2004. I started as sales management and now I'm deputy director on commercial activities. I'm responsible for the main production activities and for the regulation and automatization of business processes. Our company is translating to Russian and Ukrainian mainly localization, uh, desktop, uh, desktop publishing, and that is the first time we have the successful UTIC conference. This time it is a kind of forest conference for the second time already. I hope you will get fresh knowledge and fresh air this time. But let's discuss why we decided to make an audit and to get an evaluation from independent uh, international consultants. So this, comp this story started in 2016. Our company was 14 years old already for business in Ukraine. It is a good age, teenager, complicated age. And let's represent the development of our company as a life cycle. I hope many of you know what is life cycle. And we had a feeling that we were on the maturity stage because we passed already the stage of startup, some kind of growth, and we were on the stabilization stage. And after stabilization, after the maturity, the company has two ways to finish the activities or to be renewed in some other way, to go to some other stage of evolutional development, surely. We would like to have uh, the second option, that is the, uh, that arrow to the top. And uh, 2016 wasn't very easy. It was some internal crisis in the company. There was an external crisis. Politi uh, political situation, uh, situation didn't promote the growth of domestic translation sectors. There were more sanctions, competitions. It influenced on the volumes. And these two events pushed us to find some new opportunities to develop our business. We are very glad we found these opportunities. So we had the idea to invite someone with experience, with qualifications, with good background to make independent audit of our main business process, to present some recommendations on improvement and uh, surely we should trust this person and we know Elena from the very first UTIC that's, uh, that's how universe helped us and we decided to try a brand new tool to develop our business I mean the invitation of independent business auditor business consultant and Elena now will tell us about herself good afternoon everyone my name is Elena Rudeshka and I'm working in translation localization from 2004 In my background, you will find the creation localization department in one of the largest IT companies of Ukraine. It, it, there were 105 people in this department when I was there. It is the first Ukrainian company in the list of common sense advisory. On the pre previous presentations, you heard SimShip. We made SimShip for one of our flagship clients for 24 hours, for 25 languages, just for you to understand our volumes. Besides, my experience includes the work of international independent experts from 2013 
I am the regular invited expert for European Commission and one of the projects that was mentioned in the keynote speeches was evaluated by me and I promoted this project for further development and for the time being I'm doing business consulting and in text invited me to make an audit. I had an experience of passing the audit from the side of audited company, but I didn't make the audit myself that time, and it was advantage and disadvantage from uh, uh, in one at the same time and challenge as well. Okay, let's discuss our objectives. What objectives the company management had at the beginning of this project? First of all, we needed independent evaluation of our main business process, uh, project management and production process, I mean. That's clear that independent evaluation is not enough and we wanted to have some kind of recommendations at the end to see the effect of them in the future. And ideally, these recommendations are small goals and we would like to have smart goals. We want them to be measurable, uh, attainable. And for us, one of the criteria of these goals achievement was was the availability of uh, the application for us. It was something in the area of our of our immediate development and uh, middle strategic goals for, for the next three, five years. It was a new experience for us. That's why we were interested in, in the performance issues as well in the efficiency so how to do it together with audit uh, with auditor how much time we should spend in the office when we when we should wait for report and you know in the period of deficit of resources in in the situation of crisis it was very important for us and we were following it very clearly and we were trying to to fix it on the uh, the very beginning, you know, and I needed to make an investigation of business process. If you look at the market of translation and localization, you can't find many consulting firms, but you will find some, but all of them are broad. And if you compare them, if you compare their services, their quality, their recommendations work very well for foreign markets. But if they come to Ukraine, they don't know Ukrainian realities. and the price for our Ukrainian LSP is rather high. That's why colleagues from Intex decided to, decided to invite me for the advice, for the support. For me, one of the main goals was to find some vulnerable spots in the company. And if I find ones to advise what can be done in what can be done, taking into consideration my background. And also I had uh, one more goal to add, some, to add some value. What do I mean by that? Yes, there were some areas of improvement in this audit. I needed to investigate them and to, and to uh, give recommendations on company development. But if I see something in the adjacent areas, I decided not to keep silent, but to tell about them if it allows to improve the company process. Interview then. So let's come back to the audit. The audit started from the investigation 
all the areas we agreed, mainly it was project management, uh, work with, co with customers, and also we needed to think and to have a look who from company employees will fit this role to think about interviews, to make interviews. You know, as we were in the maturity stage already, and uh, one of the signs of the maturity are described business processes. When company is very close to the consciousness that some small bureaucratization is required for the further development and growth, I would recommend to have this external audit only if you have enough number of this uh, prescribed business process. I don't mean just regulations. Probably it could be some guidelines, records to provide them to the auditor. It's important because it, it, it increases the efficiency of this audit. Interview is a very good tool, but you cannot understand all using interviews. The time is limited, and with documents you can work re remotely. And the availability of documentation makes this process cheaper and more efficient. One more important factor is project management system. If you're talking about uh, translation business, we had one. We gave an access to Yelena. We gave access to the records in our, tem in our TMS. It helped Yelena to analyze deeper uh, some sides of our work regarding documentation. When I accepted invitation, when I agreed to be in text auditor, I had a stereotype that there are no process prescribed. Uh, but if they are prescribed, they are prescribed just from client side. And uh, most of the information you will get uh, in course of interviews. But surely I asked for documentations, and I received it very quickly during two or three days. I received 24 documents on 174 pages, and I understood I was wrong. I underestimated the company. I forgot completely that this company had ISO 9091. Nine That's why their process was so good. And you know, in the same email with primary documentation, there was a note, if you need more documentations, please ask and we can provide you more. Uh, I would like to add about the plan of the audit. Surely the plan, the program of the audit is a cornerstone of its successful completion. It is a kind of agreement between the auditor and auditing company how to make the audit. There are requirements to each other. To agree, on t to agree on terms from the very beginning and then to compare our achievements to initial requirements. That is a very important aspect. In this document, we describe the, the time of the audit, how many hours auditor will work in the office of the company, how much time it will take to make a report, how much time the employees, uh, the employees will need uh, to give to the auditor. That's a very important factor. Talking about statistics, during first audit of in text, I reviewed 47 documents, not these 24 initial documents. From the very beginning, we planned to involve just four employees, but when I found out that there are some new directions of activities and they have experience of working on them, we decided to expand the audit. And we planned 14 interviews. When you work in, on the side of the client, you need to be flexible 
that's why we had 17 interviews. But here also it was informal communication, because informal communication gives the possibility to understand the spirit of the company, corporate culture, to give some advices, to understand something if it's possible. That's it. First results. You know, you have the first results of the audit before it starts. Be because while you're preparing to the audit, we can see some gaps in documentation, in document flow ourselves, for instance. And we would like to provide, uh, to, provide to the audit the most up-to-date documents. And regarding the first results, during the audit. You know, audit develops the, cl the cl clarity and understanding, deep understanding of what your employees do, how this business process goes on. If you had experience of uh, teaching other people, they will understand me because when you teach someone, you understand it better yourself. That's why in the process of interviewing, in the process of communication with the auditor, the depth of understanding of the process was, uh, was on the maximum level. Um, what, I, what I can recommend you, don't hide anything from the audit. Be honest talking about your negative sides. That's required. It's important. If you hide something, the audit won't be qualitative. I can compare it uh, compare it to the visit to a doctor. If you come to a doctor and you hide something from him, um, the treatment won't be correct. That uh, here we can see the same principle. And you know, it's not just you, it's not just me as a main contact from company side needed the depth of this process, but employees as well. It's very important for them to participate in these interviews, to participate, to participate in, in processing these issues, to discuss with other positive and negative sides of our business. And, and regarding the don'ts, First of all, I would recommend you to definitely talk to your people before you go through an audit. Talk to them about what the company wants. Talk to them about the auditor, their role, that it is not just someone sent by your superiors to supervise them and their processes. No. Instead, explain to them that this person is here to help all of us build a better business business especially when you when you've been working in a certain area for a while your vision gets blurred and you need this you need some fresh air from the outside and so make sure that you people know this and understand the role of the auditor when you do the audit make sure it is within the business hours because if we're talking about overtime or doing interviews on, on, on the weekend, don't expect your people to take this adequately. And I can say that as regards what I've, what I've learned, speaking of overtime, as the auditor, I had to be realistic and I had to somehow fit the corporate culture. I had to adjust quickly. I had to, say, learn the ropes of their business very fast. When you audit the company, when you audit a company, this word could sound somewhat scary to some of the staff members. But if the management has the understanding of why I am doing what I'm doing, then the middle managers, if there's this understanding, they, they know 
the middle management knows what I'm doing, but other otherwise they, they come and you can, you can feel that they are not really willing to talk. Some of them were threatened, some of them were expecting that my presence would magically change things. But anyhow, I had to overcome certain barriers. But after I learned their language, their jargon, their slang, and tried to tackle the challenges that they were facing in their particular, in their workplace, that helped me conduct the interviews quite successfully. Also, speaking of the positive outcomes, we agreed on having this strategic block and a joint meeting with the management of the company and the line management as well, the middle management as well. We agreed that we would sit down and discuss the strategy. And it turned out that the middle management didn't really quite understand further steps to ensure the effectiveness of the strategy. And this meeting was crucial for synchronizing and calibrating the vision of the top management and the middle managers. And even at that at that stage it gave us this this safe push for internal for further internal development of the company. As far as the report goes, after I spent three days working on site for this client, and before that I spent even more time reviewing the documents, we finally approached the most interesting stage when the company could exhale and they said, okay, well, we're looking forward to your recommendations. And this is where the most interesting and the most effort-consuming stage began, because I had this huge amount of data to be standardized, to be somehow categorized and grouped. And I needed to somehow issue my professional opinion on the respective points, whatever bottlenecks and challenges I found, I, I was supposed to give an, a comprehensible comment and, and my opinion. I had to be unbiased, I had to be independent, I had to be professional. And this is actually part of the core code of conduct for the Euro Commission. So this experience that I already had, it actually helped me. Besides that, I had to be impartial and objective, and I had to ensure that my approach is structured. As a result, and this slide, on this slide you can see the details of my report. So as a result, we had this quite, quite a lengthy report, it contained 48 recommendations. Initially, we were talking about five areas for the audit, but it ended this, this number ended up being 10, because I had to look into some related areas as well. Overall, it took me 129 hours of time to make sure that I did what I had to do. And so this report was quite lengthy, and it covered the state of the company as at the date of the audit. It also included the analysis of, its de of the company's development strategy, the SWOT analysis, and the recommendations that I mentioned. And here on this slide, you can see the approximate, its approximate structure. And I should also probably mention that at that point, I realized that I was supposed to deliver this report as soon as possible. At the same time, I also had to make sure that it has the quality required. So it took me overall 3.5 uh, 
three and a half weeks. Okay, so once the report is in, we enter the transformation stage. And I remember when I first saw those 64 pages or so of this report, I thought, okay, I might have to go over this more than once and maybe even and apply this for longer than a year. I will use it in the future because it can think not only some tactical recommendations, but strategically we could see that it was usable over, uh, it was usable in the long term, not necessarily at the stage we were at. Of course, whenever you receive a report from your auditor, you, you, sometimes this auditor tries to uh, uh, generate as many ideas as possible, and then you can see that they are not always really up to the up to speed as to what's happening in your company. Elena here was uh, has this uh, theoretical perspective while we are practitioners, and she tried to tell us what we should do. But we, on the other, other hand, could see that there was no way for us to do all that she recommended at once. So we had to set our priorities, and we did so during the strategic sessions when we met and discussed the auditor's recommendations, and we had to rank them somehow to prioritize as to what we were going to do first and what we were going to put on the back burner. Based on the results of those discussions, we developed certain action plans and set the time frames and also identified the resources to be allocated to specific tasks. Also. An important factor that we came across several times, both before and after the audit, was the complexity of calculating the return on investment, because here it is quite difficult to speak of any direct correlation between the sales, for example, and the scope of the audit and the outcomes, first and foremost, because the recommendations that you receive, they require different time frames to be applied, so it's difficult to speak of any hours to be invested versus the number of pages of those recommendations. It is complex, nevertheless, and I personally think that for the auditor, this final meeting when we summed up the results of the job that we did together. For the auditor, I think it is it is a com it, it is this final step. Whereas for us, this is where everything begins because this is where the real job starts for us. Now that we know how to do what we do, we need to actually do it. Just a few words from me. After I released this opinion, I was looking forward to their feedback. And then I heard from Kirill that it was all theoretical. And I was I was like, how come you're so slow? I worked at a company. I used to work at a company. I know how things are done. But really, there is this, this lack of balance. For the auditor, it is always this pet peeve that I, I virtually don't have any influence over the processes. I have no follow-up influence. This is how we try to measure the dynamics of how we implemented the recommendations, because recommendations vary. They are different in scope and content. Some might require uh, a lot of resources, for example, while others don't. So this is how we try to measure it from 2017 through 2019. 
as regards the status of the recommendations that we received from the auditor. And we can see that in terms of what we have implemented to date, we can it is safe to say that this was we were successful and this was a good experience for us. And out of the 48 recommendations in the first year, we managed to implement only seven. And this is what Elena meant when she said she wanted us to move faster, but this is the best we managed. And be as it may, we proceeded to we, we proceeded with the implementation of strategic implementation uh, of recommendations in 2019, and we are still implementing them. Well, luckily for me, in text invited me again to keep to work with them, and I can see that. I can see how the process is changing, and I even had some more recommendation f recommendations for them. Kirill and I, we actually did another audit, uh, internal audit. We audited the software, and this is where I could apply my knowledge in the field. And we also had this uh, another task that we did together when we evaluated not just the Ukrainian companies, but also some of the businesses from the Eastern Europe. Yes, and this is the final slide of our presentation. And I would just like to say that this experience was something we did for the first time. And it gave us this new tool that we could apply uh, to other projects as well, together with Yelena and other external consultants. Having a tool like this one does not guarantee that you will develop successfully. A lot depends on your skills, on the knowledge that it takes to implement the recommendations. But as a general message for me, I would say look for the opportunities to expand your boundaries, to challenge your boundaries, and to develop. And I think that this experience that we have presented today, I think it was successful. And I'm hoping that it will be a source of new ideas to you. If there are any questions, just ask. And I would say let's thank our speakers. They managed to squeeze it, squeeze it, in, squeeze it in the 30 minutes that they were allotted. But I'm sure you do have your questions. We are uh, now having the break. And you could come up to the speakers and ask your questions then. Thank you.